Navi navigating nautical nonsense, and here we are, sounding boards. All right, well, welcome back to. What, what episode two, is this? 2.0. We're calling this sounding board 2.0. As 2.0. you can see right now, we have four cams. Boom. I'm the fourth. <laughs> yeah, he got it. <laughs> I thought of that joke last night. I'm s- so, so witty. <laughs> so now we're going to be able to show the components better. A um, little bit of tweaking here as we go. Um, mm-hmm. So please, like, as we kind of go through this process, and you guys are like, you know, we want y'all to be involved, so leave us comments, like, leave it, you know, email us, like, let us know what you think, uh, good, bad, and different, like, whatever, we love hearing from you guys, so, you know, well, let's let talk us about know. this beer real quick. Okay, so this is the Roadie, um, this is a beer by Great Divide, uh, here in Denver, Colorado, uh, this is a Rattler-style beer, um, that's not really a super, like, common term, but what you probably will know is, uh, Shandy, and that's their synonymous term so I had to look that up myself but yeah um, this is a grapefruit shandy basically yeah and you can smell it oh I mean, yeah that's all you smell mm. is grapefruit and that is definitely all that you can taste yes I mean it's it's good I like this one I would have liked it cold he's gonna argue that so yeah be more uh, I like room temperature beers typically but that's just like my own I don't thing. like anything room temperature which is why I don't like hot drinks at all like, oh. I don't like coffee and stuff like that. What I'll need to do from now on is, like, chill yours. Chill mine. Keep mine regular. Want mine on the rocks. I need to be more empathetic, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I like this one. This one is a very calm, oh, yeah. mild. Crisp? Uh, take. Crisp, yeah. I would say crisp summer beer. Uh, yeah, definitely. If this is, like, one where you're playing some board games out on the patio, this would definitely be, like, a good accompanying yeah, beer. It's definitely summer. Definitely. Check All it right. Out. So, we're going to jump into... We're only going to do two games from now on. Yeah, this uh, is part of the... Re-envisioning. Re-envisioning. We want to go deeper into these games, show some components. We've got some new cameras set up. Uh, so so today, let's do the, the Cult of the New. Cult of the New. So today we're going to be talking about a two games by the same designer. Same artist. Same artist. Does everything. <laughs> uh, it is Cameron's top two. I'm not sure from first or second, but top two designers. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Ryan Lockett. Ryan I Lockett. mean, he is a great swimmer. He is a. <laughs> is that not him? I, you know, I, I think he's actually a pretty decent swimmer, but Probably. he is different from the other guy. Okay. <laughs> um, so, this is the brand new game from Ryan Lockett. Again, he designed it, he drew it. So, the art style is very familiar with those who have played Islebound or Above and Below. Mm-hmm. Um, it's within that same thematic universe. Um, so you have the Kickstarter version. I do. I do have the Kickstarter version. Um, one of the reasons was it came with an actual expansion for Above and Below. We're not going to really get into that, but if that does kind of entice you, there is an expansion um, that did come out with the Kickstarter for Above and Below is your jam. So this is a storytelling game. It's uh, mm-hmm. kind of a choose-your-own-adventure. Um, but I think that it's a mix, right? It's a mix. It has some... Um, let's go ahead and pull up the some of the stuff real quick. Okay. So there's your player board. So this has some uh, worker placement in it. One of the things that really distinguishes the Near and Far and Above and Below like series is the fact that it mingles uh, the narrative style and the Euro style. Um, in Near and Far, and, and what kind of distinguishes it from Above and Below is the narrative parts are a, a have to. Yes. Um, because part of the game and... Actually... The good thing is we... Uh, the cameras still aren't great enough where we can spoil the uh, <laughs> the stuff as we go. But here, here's the cool thing about this game. It's two distinct games. You have the town, which is near, and then you have the adventuring, which is the far. Which is far. Um, and so here... And they go like, hand in hand, which they, it didn't in Above and Below. No. Not as much. In, in, in Above and Below, you could choose to completely forego the narrative aspects. You could really just focus on your town, building your town, but in this, you really, it it really incentivizes going out, exploring, it's how you get a lot of resources. Um, So this is basically like what a town will look like, and as you can see, there are a ton of uh, maps maps for different cities, and I think that is like super cool. Um, And there's a story for each 
each map has a different story that do tie in together as the more you play. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but this really gives you a lot of options for variety of play because there is like an arcade mode which you can just use cards instead of encounters. So if you don't want to do the narrative stuff, it kind of gives a really stripped down version. There's the campaign, and then there is another variant where you can just play the map itself. Yeah. yeah. And you can like develop a character and kind of do a whole like campaign yeah. RPG thing. So I'm not big on these type of games. Um, we've played Arabian Nights, um, mm -hmm. hated it. Uh, one day we'll review it. Um, but and that's what this is going to be compared to the most um, because of that storytelling yeah. element. Uh, this Agents of Smirsh, Above and Below, those mm -hmm. and, and this are the only ones I really know that do it well, well enough to be a, a game. Well, it, and and that's why I think the Euro part is something that'll bring a lot of people into the game and will really satisfy uh, part of your gaming experience. Where uh, Tales of Arabian Nights, you know, definitely doesn't have that. It is very. I, it is very elaborate in its storytelling, but it doesn't really give you a lot of mechanics and thought, you know, crunchiness. And, that, and there's that, no the strategy. Stuff. I mean, there's really no, no strategy. So in this game, um, everybody goes to the town first. You start getting you, your you start in the towns. Um, so you get these little companions, and this is what you look like. At this one, by the way, this is a little uh, the robot. Uh, <laughs> this is why I was, I think. <laughs> um, so you start off with one companion. The cat is better than the dog because cats are better than dogs. They're the same thing. So same all you're really doing is paying <laughs> attention to the, the top part. Um, the hearts in this game, um, which this character gives two, you can have four characters. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be different colored factions. Right. So Just like on the, as you can see, like on the player board here, you have a green, red, yellow, and blue. So we, you would throw that on one of the... Uh, the, the Literally on any of them. Yeah, because the companion can go anywhere. That's mm -hmm. your starting character. So two hearts is your health and your movement. It's your stamina. Stamina. It's it's stamina. it's all that you kind of have energy wise going into the expedition. Because once you kind of leave and go on your expedition, these hearts. Um, they, they, there is some ways to kind of gain them back, but mostly right. it is a using game once you get out and start exploring. Yes, and so the cool thing is, uh, it's also got a couple other icons. Very easy to pick up the icons. You have a search icon, uh, you have a fighting icon, which is a sword. Mm -hmm. You have a, uh, skills. So skills and combat are the two two primary things you can do in the game. Right. And, and you do want to kind of concentrate on one. I did notice in our games, mm -hmm. skills were more important. And, and that really actually just depends on what you land with the exploration right. type stuff. Um, now, some of the um, expeditions or interactions or whatever, there is a choice between like kind of how you resolve right. it. And sometimes it is skill versus combat. So that's how it works. You get a choice. You're yeah. going to go out. Uh, so you go in the town. You're going to get more people. You're going to get more. You're going to get loaded up for that get, adventure. You're going to get uh, these cool turtles. And, well, turtles are... Um, uh, Kickstarter only, correct? Um, I'm re I'm actually not for sure on that. So you get turtles and pack birds. Is that what yeah. you call them? So you get these uh, these cool little things. So that's how many things you can carry treasure-wise. Treasures are things that are going to improve your skills, your hearts, uh, give you special powers, give you mm -hmm. points at the end. Um, you can only carry three, which is cool. So you kind of it is good. Have to manage that, so you can't just go load up on t tons of different things. There is a race element to this game. A, a big race element um because like on on, on the the player board, there are X amount of encounter tokens that kind of go out, and once they're resolved, they're out of the game. And they really are a big way to, you know, get um, different resources. And, you know, once you're gone, you're kind of like, oh, wow. And near the end of the game, yeah. it really becomes a race. Once people are kind of able to move across the map, it really does um, hasten that whole aspect. Yeah, you get to fight bandits too, which is cool, which are beating them up. Kind of, and it, it's known. Fighting, you get to see what you're gonna fight before it, you go there. It's top down. It top starts down. weakest um, and goes down to the most, um, you know, I guess vicious of like them. So mm -hmm. once you start beating them, that also is kind of a race element because if you're not building up alongside everyone, it is really difficult. And and that actually is a drawback, I think. Um, if someone just ramped up into combat, you know, cleared out right. a ton of bandits, because you have to cross bandit territory in the game, you could get stuck. Right. And, and that and did we, actually happen in our game. We, it was we, tough. we did see that happen, and it was sad. And our friend got slaughtered many, many 
times. It was, Just it was pretty tragic. Bandits were very mean that day. That very mean that day. Um, so, what is your favorite thing about this game? Um, is it the book? I, if it didn't have the book, would you like this game? Um, I, I wouldn't like it as much. Right. To be perfectly honest, like that, it, it is the coupling. It is the coupling that makes it. Um, I love the fact that I really can't. I really have to like strategize and build. I have to like know when I need to go out. I need to know when I gotta come back. Um, I know how to like balance my resources. Um, because because of all that management and stuff, it really gives me a lot of that meat. But when I do get out, I really feel like I'm diving into this like universe that Ryan Lockett has spent a lot of time developing, and I really feel like I'm out there, um, especially with um, with now like the choices uh, versus above and below. You have choices on how you want to resolve it, and some of those really have like narrative points that can kind of go and jump to different quests, and and so, it can really get verbose. Go ahead and show the book. Um, so we played. Uh, I've only played it once. Um, Cameron's game. We played maybe four pages out of this book. Maybe four pages. Um, so for a complete game, so it was not, not much. Um, you may want to not leave that up there. Oh there's, yeah, there's, I guess there's some spoilers there. I don't know. If, I don't think anybody could read it. it. Um, <laughs> if you got really good eyesight, you don't spoil it. So my favorite thing was to actually, I liked the town a lot. Um, like was, how how you kind yeah. of gathered resources. Yeah, there was an interesting thing getting the companions, mm -hmm. getting the right companions. Um, mm -hmm. Um, also, you could not go where somebody else was without fighting a without duel. Without fighting them. Yeah. Uh, but, but it was a very kind duel. Um, because as, regardless, right. if you lose you one fight. way or another, you get stuff. That's on the advance, which we I advise don't even bother with the basic game. Play the advance. Yeah. Uh, basic game doesn't have turtles. Turtles are cool. And that's the only two differences. Um, as far as we saw, yeah. That yeah. was really it. Um, so that part is really cool. Going down was very, still to me, random at times. Uh, I did a very combat-heavy character, mm -hmm. and most times it was kind of like, eh. But I rolled well, so. Um, That's very true. It's a skill check game. In the end, it it's is. still a skill check game. But it does it better than anyone I've played before. And and that really says a lot, because yeah. if people have been kind of following us, like, everyone kind of knows, like, Kyle hates skill check. But that really... That really says a lot about like this game and maybe those Euro players out there that yeah. really haven't dived into narrative stuff, fearing that it's just going to be hard Amerithrash and not really a lot of substance. This um, this is the blend that you guys might be looking for. It's got the awesome metal coins. That's which, Kickstarter. Which is Kickstarter, which hopefully one day will come industry standard where everything just comes with metal coins. We all get that would metal be beautiful. coins or clay coins. Um, so for me... I, uh, it's only one thing I really didn't like in it. So one of your turns is just going back to start to go back into town. So you're out in your adventure. Fast traveling. It's traveling. You travel back. That's your turn. Eh, I kind of wish there was something else that went with it. I like that it mitigates. It's almost skipping a turn. Almost. <sighs> but but I like that you can be like way across and you don't have to like trudge sure, back. You, travel you back. can't just like instantly go back. It it is a little bit of a bummer, but. I feel that it kind of balances out. And it still has what, what could be a big the skill check problem to me is I built this great character and I rolled a one and uh, bad stuff happens. Oh, yeah. No, but, but the bad stuff, not and there's no really bad stuff. There's not great stuff. It's not great, but it's not punishing. It's not crippling. No. Uh, it's not like you lose companions or you lose mm -hmm. money. You don't lose anything, really, do you? No, it's more that like you just kind of get stalled, and because this is like like Kyle had said earlier, because this is a little bit of has race elements towards certain goals, that stagnation really is the overall consequence. So it's a thumbs up for me, which is barely thumbs up, and, and I if yeah, yeah. like a forty five yeah like forty five degree thumbs up forty five. 45. 45. Maybe 47. Oh. Uh, oh only because okay. it outshines everything else in this category. Um, That's fair. Uh, so, especially when I compare it to Arabian Nights, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know it's a thousand times 0.5, so it makes it a 500 game. So that's yeah. pretty good. So, um, it's 500, 500 times better than Arabian Nights. Um, I would definitely say that this is one where you, if you have like. Um, maybe older kids you could probably do this family style it is pretty family friendly the stories unlike Tales of Arabian Nights is pretty like 
any, any age can yeah. kind of go in and it's not really anything vulgar or obscene no. or anything so this definitely could be a family thing um if if you so chose uh, i guess a couple of things that we didn't uh it's two to four players we're talking uh one to two hours with yeah we yeah. learning we, it depends on how much time you spend in town sure uh yeah because yeah. it's a race game it doesn't have an end set point mm -hmm. um it has somebody triggering mm -hmm. the end uh so it will vary with our game, I think it went almost three hours, correct? But that was but that with was with a lot of learning, learning, and we really stayed in town a lot to build up. Yeah, it might not have been necessary, but we were just like, I don't know, we we're having fun in town, gathering and kind of building. So, all right. So, um, buy. For, I mean, you bought it, so I, I hope you want it's an instant. I buy would say that this is a uh, this is an instant buy for anyone that digs brand locket games. You can find it about fifty bucks. Like the base game, pretty much um, pre-ordered right now, but there's a lot of options. I mean, it's not getting sold out. And it's so. got great, great components. I, my, I have a complaint though. Okay. I hate standees. I hate standees. I'd rather have a token. Even. There, uh, there are. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why this comes across to me as cheap. Because they're actually pretty good cardboard and pretty good standees, but well, they're good. Uh, for but all it is, but, but it, it, it's a bummer. In the game. Always, I don't know why I have this. They get worn down. Standees yeah. get worn down quicker than a lot of other things. So, like minis, you know, are going to be around. Standees are going to get beat up pretty quick. And, and maybe that's it's my the complaint. Euro player in me that doesn't care what it looks like. Just, that's fair. Uh, <laughs> that's just fair. give me whatever. I don't care. Just give me a cube. That's me. <laughs> uh, I'm the color cube. <laughs> so, um, so let's ask Kenneth real quick. Kenneth, did we miss anything? They're not Kickstarter. Kick the turtles are not Kickstarter. Thank you for reminding me. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If if the standees really are a problem, Meeple Source does have an upgrade kit, both for near and far and above and below. Now, one um, that's just like for the characters, not for uh, companions. Right. Companions are still the cards, it's which the is card. good. Yeah. And that's actually one thing that we didn't go over. So um, on the companions that come with near and far, you can flip them over. And all of them also can be played in above and below, which I think is yep. super and we'll, cool. And you know what? Let's We're about to review it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Cult, Cult of the old. old. And it's old already. It's not ancient. It's pretty old. Cult of the Old. Okay, so our the second game that we'll be reviewing today, obviously, Above and Below. Um, now, I've heard this next game is called Over Here, Over There. <laughs> over Here and Over There. Uh, um, I don't think that's confirmed yet, but, you know... I'm hoping. Are you happy he's in this universe? Absolutely. And you want? Do you want him to stay in this universe, or do you want him to create more universes? Um, honestly, is uh, the way that it seems, he's always able to kind of build and really expand this like universe in ways that doesn't, you know, negate like old stuff. And as like an RPG player, um, that kind of stuff like really resonates with me. The fact that he could keep kind of building on it without right. negating the old stuff. If he could keep doing that, God bless him. Keep like going, homie, because like that's that's awesome. So this one um, was this a Kickstarter or was this um, not? I do believe this was. I did get the Kickstarter for this okay. one. I cannot recall because it has been a couple of years, guys. Uh, this is a 2015 release. Um, Let's give the players and stuff like that. How many mm -hmm. players? Is there? Um, this is the same. It's two to four players. You're talking one to two hours. Same with near and far. Um, obviously, as the spiritual successor, a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is kind of comparing and contrasting. Um, a lot of this word, and then using the word and, and then using the uh, opposite word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, hey, it works. Uh, hi and bye. Um, so, uh, just like with Near and Far, you have a player board. Now, the way that Above and Below kind of functioned differently was one companions actually were through an auction mechanic um, that is similar to near and far but this was this had uh, alternating cost uh, and really much narrower right um, which I did like because in in in, a, in near and far it was just you paid a price and you got one of the four five there's five out there right um, so in this one there was 
the price changed, um, there's no printed cost on here. No. So it's where it was on the... It's where it is on the board. So the opposite of that, because the opposite was better characters cost more in near and far. So here, you may actually pay more for a... For a what might character. not be a good yeah. character. Um, again, with this game, care, uh, team composition, just like near and far, is a big thing. But like we were kind of saying earlier, one of the biggest things with this game is you can completely play off of your player board. You can build buildings, you can recruit people, you can do all of that without ever doing any of the narrative elements. Now, how you do those is basically you just kind of go on an expedition, you you know declare that, you take any of your available companions, you say, hey guys, uh, we're going as a team, you take that team. Now, as Kyle can kind of show you guys, there are uh, dice uh, values. That added a huge randomized element, yeah. which I know Kyle really didn't dig to the um, to the whole skill check and encounter thing, because you could load up your dudes with a bunch, and just so happens you roll like a one, and it can sometimes negate and in even injure some of your players. Now, after you do an expedition, um, you know you would get some rewards if you succeed or failed, and then your players kind of go here or here each day they kind of go down so really guys you could go out on an expedition all, you could have some bad rolls all your dudes get really hurt and you really may not be able to do actions for a couple of turns yeah. which can be huge and super frustrating I'm glad that they kind of updated that near and far so there's a lot of set collection in this game absolutely um, I don't remember how the points work. Though. So, with each of those, so say I had my pair and I want to place it, I would place my pair here, and then for each pair, that would be worth um, one point. Um, then, as you kind of build up, the more, you know... So you're concentrating on... You really want to concentrate on one type. You're focusing on usually, like, a couple. Like, right. y there are different numbers of each side. You know, there are some that are super common right. and have, like, a bunch. There are some that are super rare. Now, if you can get one that's really common and somehow weight it out and be able to drop them all on one, it's huge points. Um, a lot of your buildings are basically... Uh, being able to hold more people, um, being able to get some more resources. Um, your buildings are really the way that you um, make your town work, and then your people are really only there for expeditionary type stuff, except for like base building. Like people have to have a hammer in order to build a building. And then, you do where's the feather? Do we not have one with a feather? We didn't pull one. But if you have one with maybe this feather icon that we have right here, that allows you to recruit. But other than those, like, two building and, like, recruiting, you're not really using your dudes other than to, you know, go out and then explore. But I love that this game gives you that option. If I just want to do kind of a light Euro experience and do no narrative stuff, I can completely do that. Yep. And I like that it gives you that option. So, the, show the book. So, the book is... It's much quarter, thinner. Yeah, quarter the it's size. It's much thinner. Um, and it doesn't have the... A lot of replayability as far as... Tangential. You will hit the same... The more you play it, you'll, you'll read a lot of the same... Mm -hmm things and it really doesn't matter because you're still doing a dice roll at the end of it so even if you knew what the rewards are you you may not get it you still may not get it you gotta you kind of gotta know what it is and i doubt you're gonna memorize that entire book anyway unless you play it every day no and 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 that is one thing about above and below it doesn't have the replay value as much mm -hmm. but i could realistically say you could probably play this game half a dozen times and you really may not repeat more than a couple right so it does yeah. have a lot of options but yeah man if you're playing this game a dozen times you're definitely going to see some repeats so do you need both um no. if you don't have any of them right now um if you had none i would say if you know because near and far is kind of in this pre-order you know just getting done with the kickstarter thing um actually it may be released by the time this publishes but if someone already has Above and Below, and you're kind of a person who doesn't really know about the storytelling thing, this would be a great thing, because it's going to be a little bit shorter of a game. Yeah, it is. It was a shorter game. And a lot of people have and Above a, and Below. And already. it has a definite ending, too, correct? Yeah, it does. Yeah. A definite ending. Um, it actually is... This is the marker right. ending. So once it is um, down at the bottom, game's over. Yeah, I, I would definitely recommend... That if, you, if someone already has this, and you're kind of curious about the narrative style... 
go ahead, borrow this, or go to a game library, play it. Um, if you don't have that option, then I would recommend Near and Far, to be perfectly honest. I think it builds on a lot of the same elements. Great components. Uh, beautiful. On, on both. I mean, on guys, both. The art's great. You, Ryan Lockett's a good dude. Uh, not metal coins, but mm -hmm. these are good coins. I mean, uh, I got no problem with these coins. They're good they're and big. obvious. They're yeah. chunky. They're chunky cardboard. Yeah, they're, ch they're chunkier than, you know, like a brass or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like stuff so it's much better than that comes with a ton of characters and there's more mm -hmm. now that with the with the right. kickstarter version no actually with the near and far game oh the, all. all all those characters all them, can yeah. be played with both um if you and likewise if you like near and far um coming back to this i don't really know it's kind of a different experience um, I would say if you want to do less of the narrative stuff if, and and just kind of do more light Euro with some exploration, a la like a shortened version of Caverna, I, then I would again yeah. recommend above them. I was not a fan. Uh, my wife loves it, so we played it. Uh, it's one of the first games uh, we played together. One of the first, yeah. Because yeah. um, I love Ryan Lockett, so I mean, sure. I, I'll, I'll show this and play this with him. So, so I'm, I'm very excited I'm that I'm, I'm liking him better. Uh, Absolutely, because that was my first. And seeing him as a designer develop yeah, over developed. two years, near and far from above and below, um, is is huge changes. And it's a great talent to be such a great artist and be able to. Design. Super jealous. That is super super jealous. Super jealous <laughs> uh, that that he can do that wonderful art. I mean, the art is what draws everybody into the game. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the ones who like the narrative stick around. Um, the Euro players, probably not this one. Um, I, Maybe a little bit more with, with uh, near and far, but above and below, probably not the the hort. If you're a hardcore Euro player, you probably don't need. Either. You're, you're pro I mean, really, you're yeah. probably not going to be playing either. But I'm saying, if you're like a hardcore player, um, a hardcore Euro player, near and far is probably going to be your best bet to kind of have a nice intro. Yeah, and of course, it's not for 100. Mm percent -hmm. I'm sure there's Euro players that love this game, um, but he got better. Um, oh, definitely. And he's going to get better as a designer. I, I don't know if he's going to get better as an artist because he's incredible. Um, so you kind of got an A in that. Category. You kind of got an A in that. Um, so I think as a designer, you're going to see this guy grow a lot. Yeah, and I'd love to see him. Personally, I'd love to see him work with a, a Euro designer from start to finish, like a co do a game. And that would be very, very yeah, interesting. I, I would love to see that so the mechanics even shine more. I anything he puts out, I'm gonna play at this point because he is always developing and and changing for the better. So you know, if you're super curious, either of these games are out there and just available. Play either; they're super good. If you like one, experiment with the other. Um, you know, uh, above and below is actually pretty easy to get now, and I think it's like. Yeah, five bucks. Yeah, I've places. seen it on sale. Yeah. So that's a pretty easy entry point too. A little bit cheaper near and far. Um, definitely, guys. If narrative kind of stuff, if light euro stuff is your thing, get yeah. get on it, man. So for me, it's a no buy. Uh, with the bottom below, it it kind of depends on the stuff we talked about earlier. Sure, sure. All right. So we got one last thing we want to go through. So we did uh, Mad Libs. Absolutely. So we wanted to do a little bit something that was related to storytelling. Absolutely. And, and what better way than to reach out to some of the like coolest people that we've been in contact out there in the gaming world? Eh, and eh. Some really cool people, yeah, and then some people that we put up with on the regular. Yes, that is true. So we did a Mad Lib, a created one. Uh, we went out and requested a ton of people and got just about everybody just responded. Just about everyone which responded. Was it was awesome. awesome. Since we did it yesterday. <laughs> um, so we appreciate them. So what we'll do also in this video is we'll link to everybody that has a podcast. Not everybody here has a podcast, but a podcast or a show. Uh, some of these guys you will know. Give some good shout outs after this good is shout done. Shout outs. Take one. Take <laughs> one of many thousand takes as we try to do this Mad Lib created just for you. We are not going to be looking at you guys. Got to read. Yes. <laughs> the 2017 I Am Groot Con will be held in Dollywood this year. The game of the year is expected to be Carpet of a Telsa factory by the very famous designer Eric Lang. Oh, of course. The game is a set collection that is set in the Dark Ages. The game is considered a S slimy trash type game with a mixture of Tower of London. <laughs> <laughs> the carpets of a Tesla factory has a very gentle way it uses chits. The 
but they bike. <laughs> Biking onto the board. <laughs> the Jets bike onto the board, and each player then gets a chance to get thwarted. <laughs> the game takes 56 minutes and can play between 53 and 666 players. The winner of the game is the one who gets the most Vikings. <laughs> Be sure to try the Relentless game coming to Salty Starter. Starter near you. Yes. Wow, we actually did that the one go. Yes, we did. Congrats. All right, so we want to thank everybody who helped us. Uh, uh, Matthew Ward from Dukes of Dice. Absolutely. Uh, Travis Chance from the newly founded yep, Colossal Games. Colossal Games with a K. Just in Absolutely. case you look at it. Uh, Eric Ritter. Um, he's around. We have Jeff Jackson. Jeff Jackson. Zach, Zach Mullaney? Mc McClaney? Jesus. McCallie? McCallie. McNally? Is it McNally? Zach. What's your name? And Adrian Richardson from all from the Mile High Game guys. Yes, so thank you uh, guys for doing that. We got Keith Myers, from owner of Board Game Republic, and a, just, uh, a wonderful, wonderful yes, man. Yes, he also does some of the trade shows for Yellow Games. Absolutely cool guy. Um, we got Nadine and James James Hess. They're gamers. We had to. It's some cool nerds. Uh, I guess they're cool nerds. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, even if she is not American. She's still pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. She's pretty cool. Can't wait. Uh, we got Edward from Heavy Cardboard. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Local dude. My son, Ryan, who has played two games that I know of in his life. <laughs> uh, but he participated one, like a champion, yes, yes. nonetheless. Uh, actually, one that we played. We're going to review soon. He played. So. Uh, Tina and Danielle uh, gave always. us, you know, she were, they were our backups. and They did a great job. The uh, Game Boy Geek. Appreciate it. That's pretty awesome of you. Uh, we got board uh, board games and bourbon. bourbon. Great podcast. Um, of Dice and Men. Another great podcast. We got Benji Dolly. Benji Dolly. So if you don't know who Benji Dolly is, he is Games Dean from Video Game High School. Great. He loves board games. Great board game guy. Great and I guy. occasionally go by his uh, character name. Yes. And uh, here is a. Uh, him signing this for us, which was very nice. Video game high school. He's a super cool dude. Super cool dude. Benji Dolly. Check them out. We also got uh, Undead Viking. And Lance, Lance, thank you very much. Awesome. And of course, the wonderful artist behind some of my favorite games, Beth Sorbel. And, and, and because it didn't go quite down far enough, Button Shy Games. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, we, uh, that. here's the thing we both entered your contest. You didn't pick the. You know, what? you know, we're not. We were nice saying enough to anything, put you on our show. Just, just, just you know, saying, you know. Uh, in the future, just, just in case you're wondering if we were nice guys, we were. We treat. Uh, but you know, on our show. But they're still, they're great games. <laughs> button shot, button shot. They actually got this uh, cool thing on Kickstarter, uh, now uh, Patreon, where you can get a game of the month for them. Pretty cool thing. Like yeah. Bucks. That. All jokes aside. Button Shy's contest is super cool. super cool. Next year, come around. And actually, uh, right before they usually do the contest, they usually are putting out the game from the previous yep. year. Um, so in both cases, around next, what what was that? February, March? March, yeah. Yeah. March. You know, take a look to see like what Button Shy's putting out and then like the contest coming in. So always cool to look out for those kind of cool contests. All right. We want to thank everybody for watching. We'll see you next thank time. Thank you, guys. Bye.